Sometimes wildfire, especially in the West, truly lives up to its name. This one's been licking at the eastern slopes of the Cascades for well on to 24 hours. By midday, high winds turn fire against man. He's gone over the hill on the east flank. We bought him. Got a hand. To call for help, men respond. From over a dozen states. Veteran Indian crews leave the southwest to fight a fire 1,300 miles to the north. A fire that also needs fresh suppression crews, men experienced in fire management, and materiel by the tons to back them up. I'm Doug Maxwell fire boss on my way to take over down there. And it's a tough one. By now called Canyon Creek Fire. Already 10,000 acres of blackened timber. Three miles out, I look over my responsibility. When, where will we stop it? It's going to take know-how. Strategy. The strategy will work out here in the fire camp. First off, I'm briefed. I learned the number of men already out on the line. What equipment's up front. And that more is on the way. A campaign fire is just like war. And war, as we all know, is grim. Okay, what's the weather picture? Based on this afternoon's condition and tomorrow's forecast, my plans chief brings the fire map up to date. It tells me at a glance the present fire edge and where it'll be by morning. Okay, now we, uh, need My line boss and I agree. By midnight, the fire should begin to calm down. Now, if we can just build our control lines in the morning and connect them before 3 p.m., the heat of the day, we stand a good chance of gaining the upper hand if we can hold the lines. This is a long... As I said, the fire is a mighty big one, so we got to split it up into two zones. Each zone has its own boss, and I keep close contact with both of them. Camp's buzzing. Equipment's got to be kept sharp, in tune, ready to go back out on the line. Today's frozen meals, a few hands can turn out a barrel full of dinners in no time. It's important for the men to have their chow, piping hot, refrigerator cold. The roadblocks will tell the public the bad news. Recreation areas are closed, maybe burnt out. Nightfall. The work goes on. So does the fire. Will it quiet down? Or will wind or low humidity keep it spreading all night? Zone 2 meets at 9 p.m. The zone is divided into three parts, divisions. Divisions 1 and 2 are handline shows. Division three is a tractor show. Now, completing the line between divisions two and three by noon and holding that line during the heat of the day, that's going to be the big job. Well, we're in luck. The Canyon Creek fire calms down. But our work doesn't. 4 a.m. Big day lies ahead. I hold the morning briefing. The idea behind it is to communicate to every level. In other words, if we don't all get the message, we're in trouble. Can't afford to miss a trick. What's the revised weather forecast? Wind speed, direction, the humidity. Where are the hot spots going to be? Will all our forces be in the right place? 
at the right time. And I can't stress safety for our crews too much. We don't want a casualty list. Yes, our objective goes pretty much without saying. Put the fire out as quick as we can. Point is, we must all see eye to eye on how to do it best. Not enough men in Zone 2? More tractors than hose for Zone 1? We thrash it all out until the plan feels solid to everybody around the table. Men of Forest Service and other federal organizations, local, county, state. Total cooperation. At dawn, the men move out. Loggers, mill crews, volunteers, people from town, military men, you name it. And they take with them today's training and technology. Yes, technology. For instance, the details of a fire are hard to see at night or through thick smoke. Used to be a problem, but isn't anymore. Fire research has developed an airborne electronic scanning system. It can detect small fires and map big ones. It electronically senses details of the fire. The fire's location, size, its perimeter, its direction of spread. Seconds later, a photo of these fire details is airdropped. And headquarters gets the picture. The big picture. Actually, in this area, reinforcements continue pouring in. It's a mighty battle of men and machines. A battle that can take many directions. And does. The fire line gets hacked out. For some of these men, it's their baptism of fire. This cup trench will catch rolling embers to cool them down. More men to fill the division's needs. Bad news. Wind's up to 15 mile an hour now, with peak gusts of 25. That could mean trouble. Might have to change our strategy. One thing's for sure, we must widen the line and clear out the fuel. Firefighting needs water. Water needs equipment. We use fire retardant chemicals, too. To help the men in their battle, helicopters and fixed-wing aircraft knock down hot spots with retardant drops. up in the wind made the flames spread faster. So now we do have to change our tactics. No use giving up. We'll concentrate on hot spots and try to hang on to our lines. It's pressing our men. Pressing them hard. It's a case of redirecting our crews and being sure to hold the line. So I've got to talk over the changes with the boss of Division 3. We agree on the new tactics. The 
chips are down. Men of Division 3 try to hold up their end of the exhausting battle. Division Boss 2, what's developing? Canyon Creek Fire claims a community, along with its playground. strategy works. At last, we strangle the fire. We've got control now, but we've got to be sure. We snuff out and mop up. And as quickly as we mobilize for a campaign fire, we demobilize to a skeleton crew. Meanwhile, it's time for me to move on. Report that we're on our way. The blood and sweat and grief of some thousand men. The strategy, they did the job. KOE 823 from Fire Boss Maxwell, leaving Canyon Creek. You know, it's good to see green again.